Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and welcome to another episode of Watch and Learn. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, vibrations per hour, beats per hour, frequencies, whatever you want to call it. You see uh, mechanical wristwatches advertised anywhere, and if the site is any any bit technical, they'll talk about uh, the beats per hour. Maybe it's 28,800, maybe it's 21,600. Uh, it, there's a whole multitude of numbers. They go, they go way up, and they also go way down. Uh, old pocket watches uh, beat very slow, and what that number means is it's the number of times that the balance wheel oscillates per second, more or less. I, uh, I think there's a lot of ambiguity when people explain it. I don't think anybody really gets down into the dirt. Uh, I, you know, I'll mention this later in the video. I, I did some research before shooting this one. Just see what people were saying, because uh, I do, I do hear people saying conflictory things, and there certainly is a lot of, I don't want to say misinformation, but it's certainly not very clear information. You know, when you hear that something is twenty eight thousand eight hundred beats per hour, how do you get that into a number of ticks per second, um, and and how does the math work out? So I'll do a little bit of math. It's going to be very simple, a little division. Uh, and we'll show how to get the beats per hour or A over H, whatever they want to call it, uh, into a number per second. And then tell you what that number per second means, whether it be hertz, oscillations, frequency, ticking, whatever it's going to be. Uh, I will do my, my own wrist check. It is hot. It's in the 90s today. Uh, not, nothing compared to Vegas. Vegas was 100 and three i think in the shade uh that was nuts uh, but it's 90 in new york which is disgusting and humid uh Seiko orange monster and this one's going to be in the video uh the yacht master because it's uh got a nice smooth second hand and i want to do a little slow-mo action on it anyway let's get on over to the table and uh, check out beats per hour so in front of you here i have a rolex yacht master and an orient bambino uh, the Yacht Master beats at 28,800 beats per hour, and the Orient at 21,600 beats per hour. I would say that on the whole, most watches I come across are either the 28.8 or the 21.6. Of course, there are a number of vibration per hour movements, uh, but I, like I said, these two just tend to be the most popular. There are faster ones, and for sure there are slower ones. Old pocket watch movements tend to be slower because uh, they're larger. Uh, I've seen them as high, you know, as 360,000, you know, measuring down to a hundredth of a second. But my point here is that we'll look at both of these. Um, I'll do a close-up of the Rolex a little bit later in slow motion. You can see that, um, you can see how fast the seconds hand ticks. In short, the 28,800 beats per hour movement any watch whether it be a rolex or a high beat seiko high beat is just a term that seiko uses um the edit 2024 is 20,800 beats per hour uh nothing really special about it but that's a term seiko uses uh 20,800 translates into eight ticks per second 21,600 translates into six ticks per second and if you look when i say ticks i mean that's a, a movement of the second hand is a tick and if you watch them, yeah, the Rolex is smoother, and that's because of its higher beat rate. But also, you know, just as important probably is the quality of the gear train. You know, you're looking at orders of magnitude difference in price. Uh, it's about two orders of magnitude difference in price. Uh, so it's not just how fast the balance wheel is spinning. It's also obviously how... Uh, how fine the gears are that move the seconds hand, how much backlash there is in the gears, how tight they fit together. So we're going to uh, we'll switch perspectives and we'll get a skeleton watch out of here and we'll uh, just check out what we're talking about. So today I'm going to use uh, an old Invicta pocket watch that I have. Yes, <laughs> did you just die a little? <laughs> this watch is, uh, I don't know, about 15 years old or so um, before Invicta became immensely popular. So what we're going to do is we're going to wind it up and I'm going to you know, try to explain to you what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be, you know, when we talk about beat rate, we're talking about how fast the balance wheel moves back and forth. That's this piece right here. The red jewel is the center of it, and it's got three spokes. It's going to start to rotate back and forth when we wind the watch. I'm winding it. You'll watch that spring that's in the center and the wheel, and there it goes. It's off to the races. I'm just going to, I'm not going to wind it too much. 
So it's going back and forth very quickly. Uh, I actually don't know the beat rate of this one. I, I guess it's probably around 21,600. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so as it goes back and forth, if you watch some of the other watch and learns, it's letting the escape wheel, this thing right by my thumb, the silver wheel that's got the funny looking teeth on it, that escape wheel is moving uh, you know, every time the powered fork goes in and out of the teeth and the fork is controlled by the balance wheel. So every time the balance wheel goes backwards and forwards, this little escape wheel moves. Every time the escape wheel moves, the second hand moves as well. Okay, that's pretty much it in, in short. So when we talk about vibrations per hour, we are indeed talking about that wheel. So the first thing to th that we have to discuss is how do we take this number, 28,800, 28,600, and get it to uh, a number that makes sense to us, how many beats per second. And we'll whip out the pad and paper now, we'll get down to that, and then we'll discuss what an oscillation means, what frequency means, um, and all that jazz. We'll try to clear up, I think, a lot of misconceptions and, and what the different numbers mean. Okay, so just some real simple math. Now, this is uh, dimensional analysis. This is something they teach you in engineering school. Uh, it's extremely important to get units to, a, you know, to convert units. Uh, units are very important in engineering. Uh, years ago, there was a probe that was launched into space, and it crashed because I think one team thought they were getting the number of new in newtons, and the other team thought they were giving it in pounds. They didn't convert their pounds to newtons, and millions of dollars were lost. Uh, because of units. So you got to watch your units, something we always say. So we'll start out with 28,800 beats per hour. And we say that one hour is 60 minutes. We know that. And like I said, you can do, do this with anything. Do it with pounds into kilograms, cubic meters into cubic inches, whatever you want. Dimensional analysis, it, it, it works. Uh, so one hour is 60 minutes. One minute is 60 seconds. And all we're going to do is just cross out the unit as we cancel them and we're going to be left with beats per second and we divide it out and we get eight beats per second likewise 21,600 basically just dividing by 3600 you're going to get six beats per second so the rolex is has 28,800 beats per hour which correlates into eight beats per second and then for our example it's going to be eight ticks the second hand is going to index eight times per second I will do a quick slow-mo clip now uh, that I did in Movie Maker. Hopefully it uh, works out okay. So you could see in that clip, every second, every real second, the seconds hand indexes eight times. For the Orient, it would do it six times. Uh, so if you had a Zenith El Primero, which is a 36,000 beats per hour watch, it would do it 10 times a second. So the El Primero, you know, goes down to a tenth, tenth of a second increments, which is great for uh, timing things. Obviously, you're still stuck with the accuracy of a mechanical watch, but uh, it's still really cool. Uh, quartz would be a lot better. A digital stopwatch would be a lot better, but this is just uh, really cool stuff. So let's examine uh, this system for a minute. Uh, you can see the balance wheel is going going on. This movement doesn't hack, so I can't stop it now. Um, but it's going back and forth, and it's doing so because of the balance spring, which is that little hair spring at the center. You can see it pulsating in and out and uh, the balance wheel, they form a system and basically watchmakers tune these when they're, when they're designed to have resonant frequencies. Uh, resonant frequency, you're, you're driving in your car, an older car on the freeway at 65 miles an hour, 7 miles an hour, and all of a sudden the thing feels like it's going to shake to bits. Uh, if you go 2 miles an hour over or 2 miles an hour under, the car smooths right back out. Uh, your washing machine vibrates uh, during a certain part of the cycle. That's all natural frequency. So this thing wants to run at its natural frequency, and the designers make the natural frequency of the system as close as possible uh, to the beat rate of the watch. Uh, so the balance wheel goes back and forth, back and forth constantly. So I think where people get confused is what a, uh, a hertz is, a single hertz, a single frequency. A frequency or, you know, something that when you say something is measured in hertz, it's the amount of uh, it's the amount of cycles per second. A cycle 
is when the balance wheel goes, obviously it's going too fast, but let's say it's moving like this, back and forth. It's probably moving a little more than that, but you know, about 250 degrees. Let's say it's going like this. A cycle is this, ready? That's a cycle. But a tick of the second hand is this. So there's a doubling that happens. I think that's where people get confused. Uh, frequency, beats, ticks, it's all very confusing. So when you're talking about a 4 hertz movement, 20,800 is a 4 hertz movement, but it takes 8 times a second because this is 1 hertz. Boom, boom. And that correlates to 2 ticks of the seconds hand. So I think that's where people get very confused. So natural frequency, uh, 20,800 uh, beats per hour. 4 hertz is what the actual frequency of the system is. 3 hertz for the 21,600 beat per hour watch. Like I said, just a lot of terms go around. I think people don't really understand mechanical systems, so they get confused. And I actually, I, I read a lot of this on the internet before I did this, just to see how it was explained. And I I do believe a lot of even the better watch websites are, are not doing it right, or they're not doing the correct not using the correct terminology um, from an engineering standpoint. So I think it confuses a lot of people. So why would you want 288 over 21.6? The wisdom used to be that the faster it would go, the more beats, the more accurate it can be. And that's kind of true because you're breaking the second down into smaller intervals. So you count more of them up in a second. And if you have variations in each swing, they average out more. You're getting more to average out, so you should be able to get a better uh, ticking movement. The con side or the downside that people will say is, well, this thing is ticking, you know, whatever, 25% more than this one is. So this will need service more often. All the arguments are there, and they're all good arguments from both sides. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, you know, Rolex does 28.8, and they do it extremely accurately. There are companies that do 36,000. They do it extremely accurately, and there, was a, and there are companies that do 14, 18, and they do it extremely accurately. So I think a lot of those connotations are kind of over and gone. Uh, it's basically from you know, 40, 50 years ago where the technology wasn't as great and you did want it to go faster. Uh, but you know, today, it's not really necessary. Uh, the movements have really good lubrication. The materials are getting better and better such that they wear less and less. You know, I, I still hear you know, even watchmakers quoting the five-year service interval. I'm not going to argue with it. I don't follow it myself, uh, but that's what they, they are still talking about. So as far as you know, your accuracy and your wear and tear, it, it really doesn't matter. You you get what you like. If if this is soup, you know, the smoothness is what you want. Yeah, that's cool. Then, then go for something with a higher beat. If you don't like the herky jerkiness, but I mean, even this at six ticks a second, it's pretty smooth. I mean, you really don't see much of, uh, you know, start stop. And speaking of start stop, there's deadbeat seconds movements, which actually take a mechanical movement and make the seconds hand index once per second. Uh, don't confuse those. Those are really high-end mechanical movements. They're really cool, uh, but I am, I'm not exactly discussing them right now. We're just discussing uh, regular automatic or, automatic or mechanical movements. So this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com explaining beats per hour to you of watch movements. If you like this video, please like it. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please do so at this time. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below, and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.